When I switched to M Systems, of course I did it because I wanted to try the class-leading bird and animal subject-detecting eye-tracking autofocus, what wildlife photographer would not. But what made the move possible for me was the existence of the affordable, relatively lightweight, compact ED 100-400mm IS zoom. In my opinion, the 100-400 to with its 200 to 800 millimeter equivalent field of view and close focus is the ideal walk around lens for bird and wildlife photography. I've been very happy with the OM-1 and the 100 to 400 millimeter combination. The focus is almost miraculous and the image quality is excellent in almost any lighting. In the year I've owned it, I've taken well over 50,000 images and over 7,500 keepers from around home, McGee Marsh in Ohio, New Mexico, Costa Rica, and Florida. So when OM Systems announced the new OM-1 Mark II, my first and almost my only question was how well does it work with the ED 100-400mm IS zoom? I'm not tempted at this point by the bigger, heavier 150-400 Pro, which is also way too expensive or the new 100-600 IS for much the same reasons. And I find prime telephotos, no matter how sharp they are, just way too limiting. OM System says that the 100-400 and the OM-1 is, in fact, their single most popular combination for bird and wildlife photography. I can understand why. For better or worse, the ED 100-400mm IS is my lens. So, does it work any better with the OM-1 Mark II than it did on the OM-1 Mark I? Thanks to the loan of an early OM-1 Mark II from OM Systems, I can answer that question for myself and for the other 100 to 400 millimeter shooters out there. Now to keep you in suspense, the short answer is yes. The OM-1 Mark II improves the performance of the 100-400mm IS zoom. It may well improve the performance of the Pro Series lenses even more, but the difference between shooting with the OM-1 and the OM-1 Mark II and the 100-400 zoom is noticeable. Is it worth replacing a one or two year old OM-1? That's a more complicated question. First of all, the OM-1 Mark II has several new features which are of no real importance to me. I don't use neutral density filters, I never overrun the buffer, and rarely shoot at anything over 15 frames per second. I'm only really interested in the increased stabilization and the reworked subject detecting eye tracking autofocus, since those are the things that will affect the performance of the 100-400 to as I use it in the field. I should also say that the video clips here were produced for illustration purposes only, using my cooperative little bird friend, or shot through our double glazed back deck doors, and were not part of my actual testing. I find dealing with my iPad as a field monitor just too cumbersome in the February southern Maine cold. The difference in image stabilization between the Mark I and the Mark II is hard to assess with the 100 to 400, since with the IS switch on the lens turned on, lens IS runs all the time, already giving you up to three stops of stabilization. Improvements to the IBIS system, therefore, are pretty subtle. If you turn the lens IS off, then you can see more of a difference, but it's still not dramatic. Overall, I was left with analyzing a lot of images taken handheld with both bodies and the 100 to 400. My conclusion is that the Mark II's image stabilization yields slightly more sharp images over time than the Mark I's. It is not, however, enough to make, say, a full stop difference in stabilization. And the IS on the Mark I already did a great job with the 100 to 400 millimeter. On the other hand, Besides the obvious, which is moving the human tracking to the subject detection panel, the subject detecting eye tracking autofocus has been considerably reworked, almost reimagined, in the Mark II. On the Mark I, it always seemed like there were three things going on simultaneously, or at least in rapid sequence. There was subject detection, which put a box around the bird or wildlife, then eye detection, which boxed and highlighted the head and the eye, and then finally focus, if and only if the subject detection box and the current focus targeting area intersected. Most of the time it worked just fine, miraculously well. 
However, with the Mark I set to the all-focus target area, which makes sense, as then you don't have to worry about overlapping the subject detection box, it often fails to find the bird or wildlife at all, unless they were mostly in focus to begin with, and fiddling with the manual focus ring is unreliable to say the least. It does much better with a more restricted focus target area, the cross or the small box. But then you have to deal with making sure the subject detection box is somewhere near the center of the frame, or chase it around the frame by moving the camera. Also, the Mark I does not deal well with obstructions, leaves and twigs and grasses between you and your subject. It will often detect the subject, even find the eye. But no matter how you set the focus target area and where you put it on your subject, the camera will often focus on the obstructions or the background rather than the eye. I and other Mark I users have learned to deal with it by using the manual focus override, or by switching to the single point target area, or by switching to off continuous focus and focusing mostly manually. But it's less than ideal. The Mark II, on the other hand, seems to zero in on the eye almost instantly, often before it puts the box around the head, and almost always without putting a box around the subject. It is much more eye-centric, and therefore more reliable in general, and considerably better at dealing with obstructions. Then too, it will find the bird or wildlife much more rapidly, often almost instantly, even when set to the all-target area and well out of focus. Overall, it makes a considerable improvement in the performance of subject detecting eye tracking autofocus with the 100 to 400. And it also makes the visual display in the Finder or the LCD screen much less cluttered and confusing. That in itself is refreshing. And makes it easier to tell if the eye is really in focus. I would estimate that my keeper rate acceptably sharply focused images good enough for social media and most other uses with the Mark I is is somewhere in the 85% range. Pretty impressive. If I only count the critically sharp images, those I could blow up to ridiculous magnifications without losing sharp edge detail around the eye, the rate was closer to 70%. Still impressive. I would estimate that the Mark II, from early results, is going to produce something more like an acceptable keeper rate of 95%, and a critical rate of close to 85, maybe more. Better yet, I have much more confidence that the OM-1 Mark II is not going to miss the shot I see and want because the focus fails. Good as it was, this happened more than once, not frequently, but too often, in the past year with the Mark I. Early days, yet, I still have the loner and my own Mark II has not even been pre-ordered yet. But my feeling is that, while I might still miss a shot or two here or there, it will not happen nearly as often with the Mark II. Again, all these comments are based solely on the OM-1 and the 100-400. Nothing I say here should be extrapolated to the Pro Series lenses or to the new 150-600 IS zoom. I would certainly expect the performance of the Mark II and those lenses to be even better than it is with the 100-400, but I cannot guarantee that. And finally, the most significant change between the Mark I and the Mark II just might turn out to be the rubberized control wheels on the front and the back of the camera. Such a little thing, you say. The front wheel in particular on the Mark I is a continual pain to deal with, and since it controls EV compensation when in program mode and moving around quickly in the menus, I use it frequently. The new wheels feel much better and work way better. No detail too small. So, does the improved performance make enough of a difference, if you only shoot the 100 to 400, to justify replacing a one or two year old OM-1 Mark I? I cannot answer that for you. I'm not unhappy with the Mark I. In fact, I'm very happy with the Mark I and the 100 to 400. I suspect you are too. But how much is a 10% increase in keepers worth to you? How much is the extra degree of confidence that the camera and lens will not let you down in a once-in-a-lifetime situation? How much do you hate that front control wheel? 
I have trips already planned this year to Ohio for the biggest week in American birding, where I am teaching, probably to New Mexico, definitely to Yellowstone for two weeks, and it's looking more and more likely that I'll be in Uganda for a birding trip and the African Birding Expo in December. And there's still spring migration and fall migration and nesting season to come here in Maine. I'm certain that I'll have more than one once-in-a-lifetime opportunity this year. So yes, though it pains me and my wallet to do so, I will be pre-ordering the OM1 Mark II any day now. You, well, you'll have to decide that for yourself. Postscript. I'm going to hold on to my OM1 Mark I, of course, just on the chance that OM Systems brings the reimagined subject detection eye-tracking autofocus to the Mark I in a firmware update. Please. By the way, if you're interested in how I use my OM-1 and the 100-400 for easy bird and wildlife photography, check out the links to my video series and my booklet below.